Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another episode of the Dark Avenger comic book review. This is a big episode. Yes it is. This is a huge episode and you all know it if you've looked up and you've seen the number. We are on episode 490 which means a couple of things Michael. Yes Chris. Which means a couple of things everyone. Number one. One. Only ten. Ten more episodes until we hit the 500th and final episode of the series. Ten! The countdown has begun! Yeah, and there's going to be random numbers too after that. Because that almost went underneath almost our dress. I my eye with that number. Well, that's your fault. That's a throwing it up Ten in the is air. a dangerous number. How many times did I tell you stop throwing things in the air? You could get your poke I've in your eye out. I've done it for 400 previous. I'll do it for 500 again. Yeah, and then you'll get an eye patch and you'll become one of the pirates. Arg. You know? Rated R. So that's the first thing. Second thing. Only a few more episodes. A couple episodes away. That's right. And these are going to be, for the beginning of the countdown, we're going to have some crazy first couple of episodes in this countdown. And uh, this all leads into the pre-review show. Continuing on the couple of things that we have to mention. So, um, now everybody, please, please stick with me with this because this isn't the first time we're recording this. I lost myself explaining this multiple times already. You have no idea how many times we've recorded this intro already. Mm -hmm. Michael knows. I know. I know. You won't. We do. So this, this is the umpteenth time. So I hope it makes sense and I'm sorry if it doesn't, but try to stick with me. So my math last week would have been correct. If last Sunday's review was for the books that came out that week's Wednesday, mm -hmm. it was not. We've been a week late. We were reviewing the books that came out previous Wednesdays mm -hmm. from two weeks back. So, with that being said, we were, I was kind of pointing us a week ahead of when we originally would have ended. So doing the math now correctly, if we were to keep these reviews going every single week, we would have ended in the middle of June, not the end. What does that mean? Does that mean we're going to just do these single single episodes and end in the middle of June? No. No. We, we wanted to end in the beginning of July and darn it, we're going to end in the beginning of July. So what does that mean? Now, as you all know, Mike and I mentioned if we were doing a review this Sunday, recording it, and you're seeing this on Monday because we're recording it Sunday night, um, it was going to be a double up. It is. We are doubling up this Wednesday and last Wednesday's books. However, now with the new math, here's what the schedule is going to be for the next three weeks. Obviously, this week we are doing... Episode 490. Two weeks worth of books in one episode. Next week, we will not be recording a comic review. The following week, three weeks from now, we will be recording episode 491. Once again, with two weeks worth of comics. After 491, we will be back on track with a once a week Review and we will be ending with the final week of June's books at the beginning of July. God, I hope you all followed me on that because I kind of followed myself this Basically, time. Basically, expect a 500 video on the beginning of July. Yes, and expect all, two all double ups. sums it up. And two double ups. Yeah, to sum it up, it's going to be two double ups instead of one, and we're still ending in the beginning of July. So that's that. Now, I think I've definitively decided that the final comic book review episode, the 500th, will be a video. I think we'll record it as a video because I want the quality. I want everything there. I want it to be perfect. However, I do want to do a live show. So, what we will be doing is we're going to do the 500th comic book review as a video, like we wanted to, um, and close out the show that way. And we're going to record it the night before. And if I'm correct, it's the 4th of July weekend. It'll be a three-day weekend. Right. So that Monday, which is when the review would probably go up, Monday morning, 
Monday night, unless, yeah, Monday night, we will have a live show. And on that live show, we will kind of round out everything on this channel. And uh, that will be the review. You know, the future, obviously, talking about new channel, what's going to be going on on there. There'll be a couple of things I mentioned as well. I'm sure there'll, you know, it's it's a hundredth. There's going to be some really crazy stuff that happens. There'll be some possible announcements about stuff going on for the summer and beyond. And yeah, so expect the 500th review to be a video. However, there will be a live show that night. Mm -hmm. We will be doing a live show that night talking about the future of Dark Avenger, our futures, the future in general, and also thanking everybody. And, you know, closing out five, you know, closing out the review. I don't know if that, yeah, it'll probably end up in the review folder as a kind of like 500.1 kind of deal. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll call the live show that. Don't quote me on the live show title yet. But anyway, that's all the live show news. So really quickly, if you're wondering about this shirt, because I know a few people like Chris, why? First of all, it's a muscle shirt. Yep. I love it. The Kuna fabric Matana. the fabric on this is really soft. I love. I wish they would have made different types of shirts using this fabric. Um, Mike and I recently went uh, on a little... Um, trip. Trip. Well, trip is a good word. So if you like to see that, Videos on my channel, my new channel. Videos on Mike's channel. Go check out both of our point of views. Michael's is more of a vlog video because he got to record more in the stores. Mine is more of a little kind of like, I'd say five minutes of vlogging. And then the rest is all the haul. Because it like, got... Like, like more, mine was like more in depth than yours, but we both did the whole video. Mm -hmm. In that perspective. Mine was a, more of a glorified but haul. Yeah. Yours was more of a vlog. The reason mine was more of a haul is because things got really crazy really fast in the store. When I say crazy, busy. Uh, there was a lot of questions that Michael got asked by a few people. I, you know, with the employees, they were wondering, you know, there were certain times where they'd ask what we were doing. And we have to explain it to YouTube video and then we have to cut that person out. Or we just, it would ruin the video because it would happen. Anyway, because of multiple external issues this time around, mine became more of a haul video. I did get some stuff in the stores. Unfortunately, I'm hoping the next time we do this, I'll be able to do a little bit more recording wise. So it's not just a glorified haul video. I really do want to start vlogging outside and um, I'm learning little tricks and stuff in order to kind of get around the, um, the obstacles there are when it comes to vlogging in public. Let's put it that way. But if you like to see where we got the shirts, we do have two videos up. Uh, mine has some stuff. Mike's has some stuff. I did some blind bags. Mike did some blind boxes. And so kind of gave variety to our haul video so they weren't identical. Um, the Spotlight premiered on my channel uh, this past week. I will have another unboxing video, a final unboxing video going up on my channel. Uh, probably, I would like to say Wednesday, just to push it a little bit. Um, I don't know when the next unboxing will be. It really depends right now because we just had a huge shopping and we got a lot of stuff unboxing-wise and the holidays are coming. So unboxings might kind of uh, thin out for right now. And then once the holidays pass uh, and some stuff, uh, there is some stuff that's pre-ordered, uh, comes out, we'll have more yep. for right now we don't though and that's unfortunate but i know you all enjoy it that just means it gives more time for the spotlight vlogs and other stuff i'm doing on my channel which i'm looking forward to doing that so anything you'd like to add before we move forward i'm trying to think while you add i'm going to try and think if there's anything else i'd like i to mean mention. with doing the vlogging videos you know i mean they're, they're always fun to do and there's other videos that i have planned if hopefully things work out the way I'm hoping they do. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at a pile of these okay. books. Yeah, here. okay. Now, before we actually start the review, because we are already almost 10 minutes in, Michael, really quickly, is going to tell you how many books we have in this review. Don't tell yes. the weeks yet. Just say how many I'm, I'm books. I'm going to say, yeah. We have 30 books. 30 books. 
This is two weeks worth of books. Yes. And uh, we did not separate them one week by another. It's all indies, all Marvel, all DC. Mm -hmm. The whole two weeks. So anything we review here came out between the weeks of... April 3rd and April 10th. 2019, yes, the first and second week of April. And because there are 30 books, normally we do a shorter version of the review. I know you all know this. There's double the amount of books we're used to here. When it comes to me, especially when it comes to the independent books, um, yeah, we're going to be going through these a bit quick, quicker. Um, obviously this episode is going to be longer. We can't avoid that with 30 books, but we're still going to try to get this video. I know we're at 10 minutes already, but the goal is to try to get this video to be like 30 minutes long, even though there's 30 books might not happen, but we're sure going to try. And I'm going to start really quickly with my book. I guess I'm starting Yep. the division extremist malice issue number three of three. Awesome conclusion. Leads directly into... Uh, actually, it, it ends with the trailer for The Division 2. Uh, it ends with The Division showing up at Washington, D.C. And um, I really enjoyed this book. I have it on pre-order as a trade. I've read this fully as a... Um, what do you call it? A um, single-issue uh, digital. I'm going to be buying this as a collected trade instead of single issues i know it was only three but i think it would be best in a collection as a book uh i really enjoyed it it was a great conclusion uh to this series and if you haven't played the division two yet it's hard as nails go in with friends but it's a lot of fun and i love that this book prequeled it really nicely actually yes absolutely now idw is celebrating 35 years of ghostbusters and we have two of them that I would like to review. Starting with Ghostbusters 35th Anniversary Prime, issue one of a one shot. And what this talks about is I mean, poor Egon, as he doesn't go through enough in this comic book, he gets with a demonic entity. Oh, I'll show you some more. I just love the shot. Yeah. He gets possessed by this stone that is in uh, <laughs> Greek. And the Ghostbusters are trying to find out where Egon is, along with finding info about this stone. And they use the pink slime to get him out of the uh, demonic entity as they try to capture this ghost. And they they did it ever so uh, awesomely, along with uh, giving the stone back to the, uh, the King Neptune, I believe it was. But uh, really something awesome. And we get to our favorite growing up, the real Ghostbusters of the 35th Anniversary Special One Shot. And this is where the Ghostbusters... Wasn't there a third one then? Because There is. That's coming out... Next week? Next week. Okay. Yeah. This one is actually where <coughs> new kids on the block Ghostbusters come in. And they go by, and I want to get this right, uh, Spooks Away. Now I don't know if they've ever appeared. And in... the art, the art is from the actual car, the cartoon, the yeah. actual cartoon, the real Ghostbusters. And they know when the Ghostbusters are doing every single job and everything. They get Slimer kidnapped and frame the Ghostbusters, saying, "Oh, they're supposed to capture ghosts." Well, look at this. They have this uh, ghost that was in there. And with their uh, corporation, things get a little bit too haywire, which brings the Ghostbusters back in the business. Busting ghosts makes them feel good. And you're probably talking about this comic book. That comes out next week. But the real Ghostbusters was really awesome. Definitely a classic read for those of you real Ghostbusters fans back in the I day. I should have bought those two physically. I'm surprised I didn't. Maybe I did buy one. I got to check DCBS. If not, I might grab at least those two uh, for our next order. Mm-hmm. Red Sonja issue number three. Red Sonja has been doing absolutely really well with uh, her adventures of uh, fighting off against the Romans as well as finding out answers from the king. It's a little bit of a back and forth story where there's a little bit of long dialogue, but it's just her just trying to fight against the Romans and trying to find out more information about how to get around the Romans as well as the fighting. But uh, it's a little bit more of a long, detailed story. 
But if you guys are interested, you could definitely check out the book for yourselves to see how that goes. Another game book, Anthem, <clears throat> Strong Alone, issue number two of th three. Three? Does it say? I think it's to be included in the yeah, next I'll, one. Yeah, I'll go check. The characters from the last book are now grown up. I forget their names. Uh, I know one of their names. Two of three. Two of three. Okay. Um, there's her one. One of her names. Um, Johnny. Johnny. And uh, why did the other ones leave my mind? He was. He's right there. Uh, he became a cipher. Um, keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry, everyone. The name. It. This was two weeks old. So, Johnny wants to be. Here we go. Uh, and Kismet. How could I forget Kismet of all things? Johnny and Kismet are now grown up. Johnny was a Janny. Janny. Janny was yeah. a um, freelancer. She got fired. She ends up in Antium. Finally, she steals a um, a freelance uh, a suit, and she gets a job from one of the elder um, freelancers who's no longer a freelancer and he's a character in the Anthem game. The comic is doing better than the game right now and uh, anyone who's been following Bioware knows this. Oh boy. <clears throat> I really hope the game doesn't get shut down. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, but uh, I like how he offers her a job and Kismet becomes her cipher. And we move into the last part of the story. It was a nice middle ground, middle issue. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. I really hope the game gets fixed, though, everyone. I haven't played it in a while, but I know a lot of truths have come out about the game. And for the first time ever, it's not EA's fault. It actually was Bioware's. If, if all of the things that have come out are true, it's Bioware's. And I really hope they fix it. I don't want to see Anthem shut down. The Walking Dead ish number 190. Things get a lot crazy going on in the Commonwealth along with all the riots and uh, Mercer with uh, him trying to keep things straight as well as Rick being the uh, the leader. There's like all walkers that come into, uh, <laughs> that surround the Commonwealth and they try to attack them along with Michonne and the rest of the group. And I like how they actually uh, work together but uh, the uh, leader of the commonwealth betrays rick and says that uh, with all of what's been going on just uh attack people of the commonwealth that's not good for rick on that point of view and why is this faded in this was supposed to be closer or right, whatever all right um i saw this book on mike spider slayer's um whole video and and I happen to know notice Brian Azarello writes it. <laughs> Faithless issue number one was well, a very interesting read, a very sexual read, and um, nudity, adult, adult reading only. I like the artwork though. I know Mike said he wasn't keen on the artwork when he was looking through it. I did. Uh, I like the story. I like the build-up with the girl, uh, the main character who uh, gets together with this other girl, and she's like, I've never been. And then there's that twist in the last page. Mm -hmm. eh, no, no, no. Go to the last page for the twist I'm talking about. Oh, No, that... that's not the twist. That's not the twist. That's the twist. Well, damn. Do you understand what I'm... Yeah. The, okay, the, as long as you understand yeah. that... Okay. I got this issue physically. <laughs> I actually did. I love the twist. I That was a twist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was just... Michael laughs... You read what? Savage Dragon. What was this? What was like... What? All right, keep going. I'm sorry. Just go. Very sexual content. Mm -hmm. and Very. This is kind of like plastic all over again where I'm kind of like... I, I'm probably blushing mentioning that I read this, but I did. Paper or plastic. Oh, God, I hate you. It was a good read. It was yeah, a twist, go, go but ahead. definitely not for young ones. No. Nope. Not even for teens. Oh, no, not even for teens. For adult readers. Yeah. Like us. Brian Azzarello. Mm-hmm. I'm going to steal something from Farouk here, but damn. <laughs> damn. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. It's more like, Damn. 
like yeah. that. Damn. That damn. So Paper Girls issue twenty seven. Alright. I'm enjoying this. It's getting it's coming to a head just like this review. It's coming to a head. I think there's only a couple of issues left. I think this is ending at twenty nine. Twenty nine or or thirty, but it's ending and probably um, at thirty. All the girls are in different places, and one of them comes face to face finally with the All Father, and another one goes into the future and finds out that all peace because of the girls happens. You know, peace and and uh, prosperity happens in the future. It, it it's just it's insane. I'm still enjoying it. There's some really cool dialogue in here. I, I could spend a half hour just talking about Paper Girls, but we got to catch up. So I definitely recommend it. Paper Girls was a huge enjoyment to read. I am getting Paper Girls in the big volume format. I am going. I have both of them in my shopping cart. At some point, I'm getting volume one and two. And then I'm guessing when this entire series ends, it goes by the 10. So it's one through 10. Or was it one through 20? No, it was one through 10. 20 through 30, and now that was issue... Um, 27. No, wait. Paper that, Girls? Right. Yeah, no. The it's one, one you reviewed was 27. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's 1 through 10, 11 through 20, and now this is at 27, so it'll be 20 through all the way to the end. Right. It'll be the third volume and the final volume. Love Paper Girls. Hopefully there'll be a sequel. And now we are done with the independence. Now, now we'll... we're in the big two. And actually yes. Marvel, which is where we're at now, I think we had the most books from... If I'm right. Yes, possibly. And I'm going to start with three yeah. different Conan books. You could just combine all of them. I mean, show them all, but Well, combine Conan it. the Barbarian issue number five is about Conan that goes on a pirate ship. I don't feel like the story has moved forward because I think this has been a, the past issue and a half since he's been on the pirate ship. Uh, what is it with Marvel and Boats? I don't man? know. Just... It's just like they fight off against the, the octopus. Uh, I don't know if the name was Crom. Or whatever. And uh, it seems like now they're getting to the part where it has the two kids with uh, taking Conan to some god or whatever. But Age of Conan Blit, Queen of the Black Coast issue number two. This was a great story. I'm actually liking this Conan title arc. Well, then one off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it just shows, like, she's telling the people who are on the pirate ship that this is her father's ship. And nobody runs it but her, as well as going into her father's quarters. And she's trying to say the directions of where they should go and uh, where Another they want to find. No, no, this is a good book. I know, I'm just saying. I like it. Book. You know, and then uh, they're trying to find where the treasure uh, is and stuff like that, where the father was looking for stuff. And they run into trouble. Who didn't see that coming? But this was really a great book. The other Conan book of the third one, Savage Sword of Conan, issue number many. four. There are too many Conan titles. It's Marvel. And the only one, like I said, I like was the Blit title. And uh, just let me see if I remember. Oh, yeah. So this is basically where he fights off against uh, all the uh, pirate skeletons, so to say, on this island. Again, pirates. It's all about pirates. I don't understand. And then it's just finding more an answers from Krom about why the people are now suffering from changing from regular human beings to some uh, venom in their veins or whatever. It, it's moderate. So it's like Belit, Savage Sword, and Conan the Barbarian as the third Conan Barbarian. I tried this out. Marvel team-ups featuring Spider-Man and Miss Marvel issue number one. The first side is Spider-Man's point of view on the story. You flip it. Or no, Captain Marvel side of the story. Then you flip it and you get to see Spider-Man's or you could start with Spider-Man. Basically, both stories end at the same point where they both end up switching powers because Spider-Man and Miss Marvel kind of collide at a moment where they're trying to stop a villain and yeah. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed this team up. I'll um I'll see this through probably. I like the format of one side and then flip it and then you get the other side, the other person's point of view of the story. Uh, that's one huge plus to the book. However, uh, Mike exited out too quick. I believe it's a five dollar oh. book. If I'm not mistaken, I actually want to find out if it's a five dollar book or not. Uh, really quick, here we go. I need to know. I'm looking up the price. Everyone, one second while we just really quickly look up the price here. And it is 
Well, legacy numbering, by the way, is 187. Um, I think it, it, it should be a $5 book if it's with uh, I don't know. two stories. I don't know. It's not showing me. So, I don't know. It's not showing. I think it's a $5 book, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there we go. And it's not telling me. <laughs> it's still not telling me. So somebody in the comments will probably let us know, but I I believe it's a five dollar book. I could be yeah. wrong. It could be a two nine. It could be a three. Well, it's the first issue, so it's five dollars regardless. Why do I even bother looking? Because it'll just go up. But anyway, or down. Uh, interesting issue. Uncanny X Men fifteen. Slowly, this book is going lower and lower on my list. So now Cyclops finds um, hope. Hope has lost hope since Cable died and is now joining like an army against people, against mutants. And she accidentally shoots Cyclops in the face and Cyclops loses one of his eyes. Seriously, Marvel, you just brought Cyclops back from the dead and now you've shot one of his eyes out. And this is going to be status quo. He doesn't even have eyes, really. You know what? This is not going to stick. You know why it's not going to stick? Because um, Hickman is going to be doing that X-Men series that's going to reboot X-Men again, probably. So this whole uncanny run is going to not even matter. Possibly. 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 We don't know yet. But... Um, it's, it's on a downward slope for me when it comes to X-Men. Just saying. Okay. You're next. The Punisher <clears throat> issue number 10, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but does it is it me or does it feel like we've been in this uh, war in Bagalia for a long, long time? Because this is part five. I thought it, we were out of it. But long story short, it's just the Punisher and the gang trying to attack Zemo, which was the leader of Hydra, which I did forget uh, last time I reviewed the book. And Hydra is just trying to one-up the Punisher. He gets them because, of course, the Punisher doesn't go down so easily. And uh, it looks like that there's going to be even more of uh, someone else that's going to be going after Frank Castle. And he doesn't look to play nice either. So that's going to be really something to see in the future of Punisher comic book issues. Now, there are two Amazing Spider-Mans because... Two weeks. Yeah, because apparently every week is Amazing Spider-Man comic book, and this is the Hunted story arc. Yeah, so, we're in nine, this is 18.HU. Yes, of the Amazing Spider-Man. Gibbon is 18. the main character here. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. Yeah, this one just talks about, like, Gibbon the Monkey story... About yeah, how, yeah, and his backstory about how, yeah, and then it, the one that touched me the most was when he met Spider Man and he mm -hmm. wanted to team up with him, but then Spider Man thought he was a not such a great teamwork member, so then he uses Spider Man as an enemy, and then in the end, they find out that Gibbon was actually meant for good, not for evil, right? For that, now we go on to issue 19, which came out yes. this past Wednesday of the Amazing Spider Man, right here, and this is where actually. The Vulture takes more of a lead to keep everyone in control along with uh, Billy trying to escape and Craven's son trying to get through his father's head that they are the ones that are supposed to be hunting things. So uh, as Spider-Man goes off and does everything, the Vulture tries to keep everybody uh, you know, together and the Rhino also lost his temper a little bit but Vulture tried to calm him down. As uh, Black Cat makes her great escape from uh, the prison cell. And it looks like that... Uh, Black Ant. Yeah. The Ant, actually, is uh, trying to uh, tell them the truth about the place. Of why they are acting the way they are acting. And that is something that I want to find out. I love Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. This week, this is issue number five. Aunt May tells Pete that she has cancer and she's going for... Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance treatment. to read this. Let me see this. And Pete does not take it well. He actually goes off and just does Spider-Man. That's how he escapes things. And, and there's a car that was stolen. He ends up pulling this kid out. And he accidentally snaps the, the kid's uh, wrist by accident. Finds out that it's a kid that he saved. And, you know, finds the backstory out that and he wasn't looking to hurt anybody. He was looking to get away from his family. There's some great stuff with Dr. Um, Dr. Um, Strange. Strange. 
And um, in the end, Doctor Strange kind of says, you know, magic can only do so much, but just be there. You know, because he, he asked Doctor Strange if he could help his aunt, and obviously he can't unless he wants. I love how in, in there's a part right here where um, Doctor Strange actually says, um, you can go and make a deal with, um, what do you call it? Uh, with something, um, you could go to the to another realm and make a deal with a demi. Kind of teasing one more day. And I love how Spider Man's like, yeah, probably best to not do that. I like that. And then in the end, you just see Pete there with Aunt May. He's gonna be there with her while she goes through her treatment. And you know, um, this is gonna be a journey in friendly neighborhood, and I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Did you read this? A little bit of it. Ah, you missed out on a good book. Symbiote Spider-Man issue number one. I mean, there was really, so Really, honestly, mostly this issue focuses on Mysterio. Mysterio was done. You know, it shows him doing his first bank job and it goes wrong and a girl gets killed. He doesn't do it. It's by a guard. And Mysterio actually wants out. He wants out of it. But because Pete, you know, with his Symbiote Spider costume. Ooh. Uh, yes, the Twin Towers are in this book. As a matter of fact, Black Cat is uh in this book this is back when black cat was trying to get to know peter better and um i like the black cat uh, may mo a moment in this book i like how pete thinks that uh, mysterio somehow knows that peter parker is spider-man but doesn't and literally mysterio was about to quit and then instead because of what spider-man does and in beating him up and whatnot mysterio swears revenge instead so basically spider-man kind of pushed mysterio back into being a super villain and Mysterio finds out that Spider-Man's costume is living because he sees Spider-Man like change. Oh, now don't tell me what and I now think is he's gonna happen. looking to find a way to get his hands on that costume. Uh, I think I know where this is going. Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage, issue number one. I don't know how I feel about this book. All I do know is that what they do with Carnage this time. Please tell He's me it's on the boat. cult apparently, and and it they at first you think it's for Cole, but in the end it turns out to be for him. And the two people that are running it with him are Doppelganger and oh, who's that girl from Maximum Carnage that was with her, with him? No, 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 no. Maximum Carnage. Um, I forgot her name. Why did I forget her name? This girl. Shriek, Shriek, Shriek. I think so. Um. And yeah, so Carnage is just there, and he—it's he, a Carnage book again. It's just another Carnage book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm done. Think, uh, I mean, I might check it out. I I'm even not, looking at know. it. I'm not liking it. I don't know. I'll wait for the the um, Extreme Carnage or whatever. I mean, this might be. I think this is setting up for it. As a matter of fact. I'll, 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 I think you should read the book more than me. I'm not... I'm, I'm not liking what I saw. I'm probably not going to review it anymore. I'll probably just skim read it until we get to the event with Carnage. But uh, you're not missing anything. Really not. I mean, if, you, if, if you're a Carnage fan, try it. But... Ugh. War of Realms. I said I wasn't going to buy this book. And um, not... I did get the first issue because of battle battle lines. Okay, I, I'm sorry, but it had a really cool Thor cover. But I'm not buying the side stuff. I am a hundred percent sure about that. But since everybody's reading War of Realms, I decided to try it out. Wasn't that bad? Thor ends up getting trapped in a in a different realm because he's the only one that could win this war against a new exit out already. I forgot the character they're fighting against, but he comes to Earth claiming he is now going to be their lord and, and um, god. And, of course, the Avengers fight back. And Lady Freya uh, was uh, attacked. Uh, Loki was killed. But, obviously, we talked about... They were they were talking about this on Frontline Live last Tuesday. Loki's getting his own series, so he's dead. But I don't think he's dead. Marvel kind of spoils that by mentioning there's a Loki series coming. So, obviously, Loki's going to survive somehow. Um... I'm interested to see where War of Realms goes. Like I said, I'm not reading like This Week Journal came out. I'm not doing that. Uh, if it goes into a book we're reading, I mean, that's another reason why. Uh, but I'm really not... I'm not giving in to all these minis that are coming. I know there's a Punisher mini coming. Um, most of it... 
will be digital reads for us at most. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to try to stick with the main series because Marvel has this this thing about putting out a thousand different books for one little event and then honestly nothing happens. I'm hoping something happens because Jason Aaron has been setting this up for a while, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. It was a strong first issue. I enjoyed it. I liked the uh, Thor parts. I enjoyed the Avenger parts and the Loki death would have been better if like everybody on Frontline said they weren't announcing a Loki series coming out next week. Oh, no, oh coming out soon. Into DC, starting with DC Vertigo, the only DC Vertigo book I'm reading, The Dreaming, issue number eight. I did not like the art, and again, I just took me right out of the book. And that's that. Lucius, I think, is back in The Dreaming, possibly, because he disappears. And the girl gives a, a little bit more backstory, but again, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. Couldn't. I didn't like the art. I'm hoping the art goes back or I might be dropping the dreaming for a while or moving into a casual read. Wonder Twins issue number three. The cover says it all. It's all about Gleek. Gleek. The Wonder Twins get into trouble and Gleek, the monkey that Zan actually adopts who comes from a circus ends up saving them and becoming their pet. Long story short, please don't show that cover. Show the variant. Thank you. God, that cover so bad. Um, Young Justice issue number four. four. I'm showing you all the variant cover because the main cover, if we ever do decide to have a worst cover of the year category for Frontline, that is the worst cover. Oh. Superboy has a boss scene in this book. There's a wonderful reunion of the Young Justice core members Still don't care about Teen Lantern. Still don't care about Joanna Te Hex. And I'm starting to question Amethyst at this point. But Superboy ends up saving all of them towards the end of the book. And um, we'll see what happens next. It goes. It gives you a little bit of a backstory with, ja with Amethyst a little bit. And with things to come with Robin. Robin being on the other end of a sword. We'll have to wait and see where that goes. But um, I'm enjoying it. It's just right now we're in a lot of filler, a lot of backstories and whatnot going ah. on. And apparently Superboy's daughter's name is Martha, which I thought was really cool. Again, not 100% on the daughter or anything like that. We still have yet to get any backstory on those two characters or if it's even true. So, Adventure of the Super Sons, issue number nine. The Super Sons end up on a planet. And look at that, Jonah That's Hex. not Jonah Hex. That's a robot. Oh, why did you have to ruin my hopes? So it's Hex World. They're on a planet that is in the Wild West times and apparently all robots. And Jonah Hex's robot ends up helping the Super Sons escape the planet and chase after the Injustice gang because they're going to go attack and take uh. over Earth. Only three more issues to go. Justice League, issue number 21, we find out who the Superman is. Or the imposter Superman is. It's the World Forger. And he basically claims that it's because of the Justice League that some bad stuff is going to be happening in the multiverse that he made. And um, basically he's trying to sideline them and stop them so, you know, doom can be contained. And, and basically they'll have a utopia future. And uh, they don't agree, most of them, with the way the, the, the it has to go, where they have to trap all of the those who would side with Doom and lock them away forever and ever and ever. Uh, we get a little bit of a fight with Mitzel Flick going on in Metropolis. And the Justice League have to vote. And I uh. noticed one key thing I'm going to say is, at the end of the issue, Batman was the only one that wasn't agreeing with the Justice League. The entire Justice League, except Batman, end up getting teleported to what looks to be a prison... Um, part of the world and Batman is not there so I'm wondering if his thought of you know siding with the world forger or the trick of siding with the world forger uh, actually brought him somewhere else possibly I'm reading this book because I'm reading Teen Titans Deathstroke issue number 42 and this talks about when Deathstroke was uh, talking with Robin in the cell about um, how he got to the way he is. His uh, son, so to say, is uh, doing uh, sign language. 
to try to get some uh, information. I mean, I haven't been following Deathstroke, so I've been lost a little bit. It just, But it does show with Teen Titans about this uh, new villain that is actually introduced uh, that was fighting off against the Teen Titans. So, between trying to remember and know what happens in Teen Titans, yeah, Deathstroke in there, but I don't really know, like I said, Deathstroke because I haven't been reading it. But it looks like that, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Deathstroke might have some uh, simple things to say to Robin of what to do. Batman 68, another dream. Lois and Catwoman, this, this is a dream slash memory of Lois and Catwoman before the wedding, having a bachelorette party at the Fortress of Solitude, and Batman and Superman having a bachelor party. Um, at Wayne Manor, doing some mini golf, doing well. They go out to mini golf. They watch a show. They play chess. They do a couple of things. And Lois and and um, Cat Selina are having the time of their lives in the Fortress of Solitude. I'm so tired of filler. If we get to, I mean, I know by the end of this issue we saw Batman hooked up to the machine, and usually when they show the person hooked up to the machine, that's leading towards him breaking out of the machine. I am. I heard there is an arc coming up with Bane finally where where Batman's going to deal with Bane. We're at 70, which means there's still 30 more of this. I don't know if I'm going to... I'm going to wait till we get to the next arc. If that makes me feel the way this one does, I'm dropping Batman. Because this was a filler hell almost, like Inuyasha, where we were stuck in this for almost nearly... Mm. I think this is now the sixth issue... Uh, and we're going at least another one or two. So we're going close to 10 issues of filler. This literally could be a trade paperback. And it will be a trade paperback of 90% filler. That's not good for any comic series. To go that many issues. Even if it is twice a month with filler. Uh, so um, we'll see where Batman goes with me. But it's lower on the list than Detective. Which isn't doing much better. We'll get to that. Red Hood Outlaw number 33. We have Jason Todd, who is still keeping the Penguin captive behind glass. Whereas, uh, oh, oops. Got that, I hit the wrong button. And uh, it's just really like a long story short about while he's talking with Penguin, uh, his uh, reasons of why he's kept behind the walls. Uh, meanwhile, we have, uh, I don't remember that woman's name, that holds that clan. Uh, actually, Jason Todd meets up with a... Uh, his uh, high school sweetheart that uh, he used to uh, date. Uh, I just want to get what her name is. Um, Isabel. And they actually try to catch up a little bit on what uh, they've been missing. So you have these uh, sisters going up against these guys who are attacking on the boat. And, Another uh, boat. Well, yeah. And then uh, this one they actually uh, win successfully. While Jason Todd's trying to find out uh, more stuff. With uh, fighting off against... I believe it was one of the sisters or something like that. And uh, just ends up where uh, that that was it. But it says the end question mark not even close. So this could mean other things. We'll have to find out what it is. Detective Comics 1001. New art begins. New artist. New everything. The art is going to take a little getting used to. New logo as well as you saw at the top uh, at the comic cover. Art's going to be something to get used to because, uh, again, new team. Uh, but Batman is dealing with some stuff going on in Gotham. And then I'm trying to remember because this was one of the first books I read. Uh, you have, um, I would say Man Bat, but it's not. It's his wife. So we have Female Bat. Uh, I don't remember if, there, if she actually has a name. Forgive me if I just sounded completely stupid. Um, no, her name is Francine, but I don't know if her if she is she's not man bad obviously but uh lots of stuff's going on apparently in gotham and batman's dealing with that and then by the end of the issue long story short he comes face to face with the arkham knight who believes that it's time that batman you know it's over from being chased by shadows as he says i i don't know it's a first issue again the art is going to be something to get used to um We'll see. We'll see where Detective Comics is going. 
And finally, at the 44-minute mark, I knew this was going to be happening, or we're about to hit 45 minutes, Superman issue number 10, the final filler of what happened with John. John fights Superwoman. He uh, Jor-El finally finds him, and they escape that world. They escape Superwoman together. And then it turns out Jor-El tells John that he's been gone for only three weeks in their time because he got stuck in a time and space uh, loop. So basically, he was lost in space, which is why he ended up on the Crime Syndicate universe, and then he was lost in time, and he was sent back in time. So jor with all the variables, and of course, you know, the, there's 52 different uh, Earths out there, taking three weeks to find um, John, finds him, but finds him now what seems to be years after, um, you know, while he was stuck on that planet for years. And uh, I just, it's really interesting how John basically was tortured for years by the crime syndicate and was stuck. And it, it explains why John is older, yes. But again, it's, uh, yeah, John, while he aged in body, did not age in mind now, we know, because he was trapped um, for those years by Ultraman. But then saved by Jarrell soon after. It's, again, and now they're going to face Jarrell, uh, who they bring, of course, they brought it all back. Roll Golzar was, uh, after Jarrell saved John, Roll Golzar attacked Jarrell, and John ran home. Like, Jarrell sent John home. And now John has to find, now him and Superman end up, you know, Superman, of course, says, Do you really want to go out there? And he's like, Yeah, of course I want to go out there. And they go out. They're going to go face Jarrell and Roll goes R and they end up in the middle of this gigantic war to be continued. We all knew this was coming. Superman is Roll goes R and apparently action is going the Leviathan route. Woo. I'm just not excited when it comes to Bendis' Superman. Should I mention the one book that was missed in this uh, review or... You could. Yeah, there was one book that I missed, uh, Independence, of, um, really quickly, uh, Robin Hood, Wanted, issue number three of six, really awesome book, uh, definitely, uh, interesting about how she's keeping her things undercover, underground, from all the cops and everything, but I'll probably, if we're having, if, for the Frontline Live, uh, thing, I'll, yeah, I'll probably explain more about that yeah. in there. All right, and with that, that's, uh, yep. that's it for this review. We will see you all in two weeks uh, as we are going to have to double up the next review again. So 491 will be another two-week one, and then we'll be back to normal after that, thank God. And, yeah, we are now officially on the road to 500. Yep. Nine episodes left. But for this episode, now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts on the books we talked about for these past two weeks. Likes, dislikes, agree disagree you're welcome to drop some recommendations if you like but till next time everybody take yep. care keep reading keep collecting we'll see you all really soon in the next review Later till then one. check us out on frontline live exactly so, see you all there by the way we're next with the contest i'm next with the contest so stay oh, yeah. tuned this tuesday tomorrow where i'll be showing you all the prizes that i'm going to be giving away to the contest winner so yeah see you all there hey, everyone